Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Dungeon of the Endless. So hey, check it out, I unlocked the Refrigerator pod. Uh, I had a kind of a tough time with this. I was all high on that easy victory thinking, hey, I finally, like, I get this game now. And then I went back to do this. In case you don't remember, the, the way this pod is unlocked is by beating the game without ta ever taking any crystal damage. And I put it on too easy and I was like, we'll just blow through this real quick. Uh, and it took me probably nine-ish runs to actually do it. And several of those runs ended on, f like, floor 11. Uh, it was miserable. I had a I had a real bad time, but it was an important bit of perspective resetting. Turns out, I'm still bad at this game. A good thing to remember for the future. However, we've earned it, we're not going to use it. Uh, today we're making a run in the Armory pod. This is uh, something that people were asking for. Uh, it seemed like people were also interested in the Infirmary pod, so we'll do that one next. And the plan, my plan for this series from here on is we'll do like two or three more runs, just try out some pods, see some different things, and then we will conclude the series with a sanitary pod attempt on easy. Um, I do not anticipate victory here, but this is the mountain we have left to climb, so we're going to try to climb it. But anyway, like I said, for now, armory pod. I think we're going to leave our hero selection on random. Oh, check it out. I did unlock Elise Ness on the uh, the successful refrigerator, refrigerator pod run. And I also discovered that uh, Opbot and Ken have a story together. Uh, so the deal here, our mechanical deal this game, is that we have four powerful heroes at start. I'm still not 100% sure what they mean by this. Whether it's just going to be like everybody starts at level 5. Or whether um, they maybe just like have, they have much better stats than normal. We'll find out. I'm hoping that it's the latter, because that'll give us a lot more room to develop, which we will need due to the fact that we can't generate um, industry or offensive modules. <clears throat> start with some weapons supplied at start, and honestly, even if they're bad weapons, that could be really useful, because you saw a couple of times on our previous runs in this series, and also I saw a bunch of times while attempting the refrigerator pod thing, uh, it is totally possible to get to the end of the dungeon without ever seeing any weapons of a particular type, and that type is always one that your heroes want to use, it seems like. No additional heroes in dungeon, which just means that I cannot be having people die. There's going to be a lot of pausing. I'll just warn you in advance. I have to be careful. Uh, no modules except food generation at start, and we can never learn any offensive or industry modules. We can still learn Neurostun and Tear Gas, so those are both things that we'll be on the lookout for. Um, actually, now that I'm thinking about this, what I'm really worried about, I guess, is science. If we have no way to generate science at the beginning, we're going to have to, like, bank our passive science income until we can get a science generator, right? Like, that's going to be really important. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to get lucky. It is possible to generate large quantities of science in other ways. Like, if we um, encounter a science merchant, we could sell him a bunch of stuff. Or We'll have to hope that that is what happens. Anyway, here we go. Four random heroes, armory pod, easy difficulty. Who's ready for a nightmare? I suspect that this is going to be much easier for the first couple of floors than the uh, base escape pod, and then it's going to get more difficult as we get up to those larger floors where you're going to end up with more stuff, um, what do you call it, more stuff unlit. So we have a weird squad here, Eseb Tarash, who we are familiar with, Dust Ghost, and I'm noticing that, yeah, it is two of each of the lowest quality, lowest rarity weapon of each type. Well, you know, it's something. Uh, we are level 1, and I think our stats are better than normal base, so that's good. We have here Warden Mormish, the warden of the prison ship. Mormish was a reclusive and largely invisible personage before the crash, but now seems to have come out of his shell. Instead of hiding and giving orders through others, he is loud, present, and pushy. People get the feeling he's trying to sell them something. So he is in a cool floating chair... He has got your back, and... Ah. Speed plus 10 if not alone in the room. If he has somebody to push his chair. <laughs> it's the medic. We know the medic. This guy is... Good, right? Do we know the medic? I can't remember if the medic was somebody that I had in one of the on-camera runs, or if he was from the refrigerator runs. But he's good. He has a lot of, uh... A lot of skills similar to Rosetta. And Krayang, known as Defender of the Archives... Krayang kept this title even after an unfortunate event in a cryogenic chamber altered her cell structure. Now forbidden to touch her beloved archives for fear of damaging them, Krayang is triply ferocious in defending Drakken history and lore. Okay. So, 
big boosts to attack power and speed if there's a research in progress. Unfortunately, not something that's going to be happening a lot. I, I believe that uh, Essib gets this skill eventually as well. Uh, so you are a gun guy and you are a sword guy. Okay. Yeah, everybody gets a weapon right off the bat. It's all right. Wow, Essib's attack power is high. Yeah, okay. Essib is our primary fighter for the moment. I guess with that, let's get to it. Now, unfortunately, Ward, uh, Mormish is the only actual person from the ship. Okay, the, the TF2 medic still has one of the ship group skills, but unfortunately, they don't have the same one. So... Oh no, pack of dogs and got your back skill bonuses are applied with any heroes in the room, so... Cool. Mormish will get his 10% defense whenever he's not alone. And... Caspar here will get 6% uh, attack power. Wow, our base science income is 1. That's bad. Alright, um... This guy might be an operator. I think we probably want to try to figure out some op... Uh, he's probably an operator too with 11 wit. Unfortunately, the only the, the two the only two skills I really know here are Eseb and the Medic. Uh, neither of whom are operators, I believe. So I want to try to get an operator early. Need to supercharge our resource generation. It is, it is obviously going to be pretty hard for us to generate resources here. Yeah, pretty good damage output. Yeah, build another food replicator for a little while. I guess we'll... Yeah, let's, let's fan out a little bit. Let's try to get the lay of the land here. On the first floor, yeah, there's often a branch that's immediately a dead end, so that's good to know. And what have we in this research crystal? Yep, no path to science research. Makes me a little nervous. We'll probably go ahead and pick up Neurostun, though. This is a good module. Provided that we make it to 20 science before the end of the floor, that is. Might not happen. Okay, after we open this door, we will get a uh, get to build another food module. Oh, hey, that thing is science, right? Yeah, okay, that's actually awesome. Back here and start getting me that Neurostun. Now, we're going to have to be really careful about placing minor modules. To the point where, actually, I wonder if it is a good idea for us to pick up this, uh, this thing. Using this as a way of resetting researches uh, is, is usually better than actually hitting the reset button. You know, if, there, if there's something that you can imagine a use for, you usually get it. But here, the difference of 10 science is actually a lot. That said, I, I bet we'll be happy we have this at some point. And it's going to be a long time before we can build another food replicator. All right, so this room's not powered. We need to leave somebody behind. Also, we got to start leveling people up. I'm going to I'm going to put like I'm going to get this guy to like level 4 or 5 at least. I'm hoping he's going to be a an operator. I don't know, maybe maybe I should be putting those levels into uh, the warden instead. Uh, we'll uh we'll keep going on Krayang for the moment. So I'm going to have Krayang and, yeah, Krayang and Tarosh step ahead here. Sorry, that's wrong buttons. Boy, we stopped finding dust a lot earlier than you usually do on the first floor, I feel like. Right, out of curiosity, what are the available researches now? Ooh. So those all the monsters on the floor, huh? Oh, okay, great. We found the science creator nice and early. 32 science is a lot, though. Is Krang, like, a much better fighter now that he's got some levels? Not uh, Eseb is still... Definitely better at killing monsters. Yeah, this is... Powerful is a good word for that. That feels powerful. So we'll give Krayang one more level, because he is going to get a passive. Hopefully it will be Operator. 
Yeah, and then he can just stand back and generate resources for us and occasionally slow all the monsters on the floor from the safety of his, his little hiding room. Okay, a whole bunch of industry is cool. Does that mean that I want to put up a food replicator? I am definitely willing to trade industry for food at a rate that is worse than one to one. But... How many doors do I think are left? Maybe five or six? Am I willing to pay 30 industry for maybe as much as 18 food? I think the answer to that question is no. I think I'd rather just bank this for the next floor, which will be larger and we'll get, we'll get better uh, resource efficiency out of it. All right, Krang. Yes, excellent. Krang gets to go back here and be the defense guy and unfortunately now we have to uh, now we have to defend against multiple rooms of enemies with only level one heroes well you know our heroes are tough and relatively mobile and I really hope we find a uh, I hope we find a merchant on this floor Well, I'd be lying if I said I was excited about having found the elevator already. Kind of hoping to find that at the end, you know? Oh, okay, more science. That's welcome. You need to fall back to two. Holy crap, he is getting crushed. Get out of that room, man. Oh, you know what? We should um we should focus on Eseb next until yeah, until he gets the skill that makes it so that monsters provide more dust loot. Yeah, wow, you are not qualified to stand in the front. But I guess you're going to be better at running to Mormish than Mormish is at running to you. Oh. Pressed the wrong button again. Ah, and he did make it across the threshold, so we lost his operating bonus for a room. That's really dumb. Okay, we can light another room. It won't actually matter, though, as far as spawns go. All right, immediately retreat to Mormish. Okay. Yeah, that's just what we're going to have to do every time. He can stand here long enough to block spawns, but then he's got to run to Mormish right away. And we need to open every door, because we need all of the loot we can get. That's helpful, though. We found a couple of those now. Uh, we're not going to get the science research started on this floor, but um, the stuff that's available from the research crystals only changes if you press the reset button or if you pick a research. So the crystal we find on the next floor, we'll still have that available. Just trying to block spawns here. Yep, okay. Okay. So we need one more door before we can level up Esseb to get his dust loot thing. And what have we found? It's some extra food. So actually, we don't need one more door. Okay. Oh, before we leave, we should remember to put all this stuff into the backpack. I feel like it should put some. It should put the first four items in the backpack for you, not make you have to do that. It seems a little silly. All right, who's the fastest person on the team? Who's our crystal runner? 34... Okay, it's the medic. So I'm going to depower this room. We'll power this one up. The warden can just sit there in the uh, in the final room. I'm going to actually do that. Okay. I think we are ready to leave. Should be easy enough to get the science creator researched on the next floor, which will be very helpful. This is actually going to be a little terrifying. I guess I wasn't really thinking here. Um, he's maybe not the best crystal carrier because he seems to be quite fragile. He's making it, but we probably don't want to use him for this on the next floor. Press the button. Press the button. Okay. Yeah, we're definitely not using him for that again. Not until he has, like, a lot of levels. 
I used to think, poor monsters, they have families. Now I want to kill the family, too. Yeah, you sound like the warden of a prison. Okay. So we're learning some things. We're, <laughs> we're getting, uh, getting the hang of it here. Alright, immediate food replicator and Krayang, you get to stand here for the rest of time. In the meantime, let's the rest of us go this way real quick. In the hopes of finding a lot of dust. Yep. Yeah. Rooms right next to the elevator are awfully good, it seems like. Okay, it is a rapier of the same quality as the ones we already have. Great. Uh, let's explore one more room this way, I guess. We have the dust for it. Okay, as soon as we hit 32 science, we can go for that. I'm trying to figure out how much I want to fan out, like... Should we start pursuing a direction now until we hit a dead end? Or is it a good idea to, like, fan out around an area? Or fan out around the elevator because the rooms close to the elevator seem to be a little bit more friendly? Not really sure. Oh, I gotta be building stuff. What am I thinking? I totally just booted five food there. Oh, I have my dust skill now. I gotta remember to use it. We, Maybe I should not... I was gonna say maybe I should not build the food replicator and we should wait until we have a science replicator, but you know what? It's gonna be such a long time. That's probably not a good way to go. Yeah, so if we fight monsters, I gotta remember to pop the, the dust thing. Ooh, this is, a, this is a thing we're definitely going to do, but it's much more dangerous now than it used to be. Spending influence, or spending industry to get nothing is a real problem now. How much does this does this thing want? 30? Oof. Maybe we won't do that right away. Alright, I think we've explored this side of the thing as much as I'm comfortable exploring. I'm going to leave the medic back here because he is not any good in the fight. Wow, really? Okay, well, we don't need that one. That one might get bulldozed. Come on, dust loot. Alright, well, we got two. I have no way of knowing if we would have gotten that two uh, without using the skill. One, uh, one door left on that, I believe. Then we're going to have to figure something out with the power, because I do want to get another major module slot available. Okay, Esim Terash is a very good fighter. So, anything that's left is going to be in this direction. This is not great. I don't like the way this floor is constructed. So we, after this door, we're going to figure out how we want to redistribute power so that we have access to our, uh, to a major module slot. That certainly makes things easier. I should actually be leveling people up, right? So let's give a couple of levels to these two. Okay, he can double the loot probability of monsters in his room, but it makes him basically useless in combat. So only do it when somebody else is around. Uh, and we should probably put a couple levels into the medic. He gets this paramedic skill, which is awesome. And defense for all the heroes in his room, which scales upward with more levels. And also dehydrated water. Hey, cool. Uh, let's give that to somebody who's going to be fighting. And it gives us a reduction in heal cost. That's good. We really don't want to ever have to use a heal. But, you know, I suspect that that's not actually an option. So can we buy another level? No, okay. Seems like these heroes are all relatively expensive to level up. So, let's build a science creator. I'm wondering if the thing to do here is to depower. Oh no, that room has a major module.
Yeah, I guess we should just leave things as they are. I'm a little nervous about how, like, spider webby this floor is. It's a lot easier for me when the floor has uh, more long tunnels that all run in the same direction. Yeah, that run to the same place. So our science module is under... Oh, wow. Our science module is going to die immediately. That's one hit. Uh, I said get over here. I think the waves are spawned. We can, we can just run everybody in, right? Extract them. Okay, and I mean, we may as well... Well, no, if I hit this, he's not actually going to be able to kill the monsters in his room. Never mind. Maybe he is. Get in here and help him. Let's get some dust. Okay, we got a little bit there. Nobody knows how to repair this module yet. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot. That's a real problem. And that pretty much means we have to we have to station somebody over here. I guess that's fine. Yeah, because we, if we have spawns in this room, we're going to lose our science creator. Actually, I can depower this. Hold on. Yeah, we can do this like this. There we go. Because I don't really need this research crystal anymore. If we want to do any more research, we could do it with this one. Emergency generator, firebot, and bioorganic transference are both a little bit more interesting now than they have been in the past. Uh, first of all, since we no longer need minor module slots in the room to be guns because they can't be. And secondly, because like 100 HP of hero health is way more valuable on this uh, on this pod than it is on the others. It is effectively a lot more damage output. Yeah, these are interesting. We'll... Uh, Pick up one of these. I don't know what yet. I, that's not a decision I have to make at this moment. I think we're probably not doing this just because I won't have the industry to spare. I should probably do that. You have to fall back and catch that stuff. And actually, you're not even going to do nearly enough damage. Uh, Mormish. Crap. Okay, no, we're good, we're good. I'm gonna go ahead and hit this. It's a lot of health regen. That paramedic ability. It makes the makes the heroes in that room extremely tough to kill. So and it's good that we haven't found the elevator yet. That can make things really awkward. Now, there is a door on the other side of that room. That's unfortunate. Bonds, okay. I think the three of them together in this room should be able to handle things. I guess I should do this. We should increase the, the probability of getting loot in this room. Did I get the all clear? Maybe it was covered up by the sound of that ability. Oh no, okay. So those crystal guys are really, really slow. All right, we can turn that on, and then we can keep more people over here. And I should probably move Krayang. This is going to cost us one turn of our operating bonus, but he should be over here. I think I'm going to level up Eseb. We know that Eseb eventually gets the uh, Pilfer skill. I mean, the earlier we can get to that, the better. Right, this room is already lit, which is nice. Which I think means I'm actually going to explore in this direction. Okay, eight more dust is cool. And more mish isn't going to make it to that room in time to block any spawns. Okay, but he didn't need to. Actually, I'm going to have him be over here, because the medic is faster than he is, right? When he's not in a room with heroes. Yeah. The medic will retreat to arms a lot more a lot more effectively than he will. I almost said a lot more better. Okay, so we're focusing on Eseb for now. This is the part where we have to make that decision about researches. As soon as stuff starts entering the room, we hit War Profiteer. Yep, 
Get me all of the dust. I mean, this, like, incredibly dust loot heavy squad is pretty cool. If we keep working these skills appropriately, this could make things a lot easier for us in the long run. So I guess we should start our researches on this crystal because it's less likely to get destroyed. Do I want to go for the bioorganic transference? Both of these are things that I'm only going to build in situations that are like absolutely desperate. It's going to be up, uh, up to 100 XP, or up to 100 HP distributed over the heroes in the room. I don't know, this still seems awfully weak. It's a lot of monsters in total that you kill in a room, but I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm wrong and that was the right play, but it's uh, I'm having a hard time imagining it. I think he actually did manage to block the spawns up there. I have to retreat two arms. This skill is a, a two-door cooldown. That's actually really nice. Alright, the floor is way more under control than it was a little while ago. And it is nice to find the elevator at the end. Okay, yeah, he also picks up Defender of the Past. At some point here, he's gonna get... Um... Oh, Pilfer's at, like, level 9, though. I probably don't want to run him all the way up to 9. We should just, yeah, distribute some more levels to other people. We got every Everybody has to be ready to fight. In case we have to use them to defend a path by themselves or something a little bit. Obviously, that would never be a long-term plan. Nope, everybody fall back. We're gonna fight stuff in Mormont's room. Mormont, more Mish. Maybe that dust loot. It's working. We're getting we're getting a lot. Keep an eye on these health levels. I don't remember if the medic naturally gets placebo or not, the, the skill that gives you passive health regen in his room. But I sure hope so. Let's light that and block some more of these rooms. Yeah, that might be a good place to spend some levels. Also, Krayang maybe? Like, he's not actually gaining wit. Yeah. Maybe Mormish, because he is low level. If we get this up to level two, that would probably be good. I bet it's I bet it's four times loot probability at level two, so. Okay. Elevator was the final room of the floor, which is neat. And we got no spawns, okay. Let's figure out how we're gonna redistribute the power here. Uh, we can depower probably all of this stuff. Alright, this room is self-powered. Yeah, this isn't bad. This is this is totally fine. Alright, so the medic is not the runner, even though he's the fastest, because he's too fragile. Yeah, Esseb's almost as fast as he is, and he's a lot better at surviving. So we didn't find a merchant anywhere, huh? We're going to be leaving one item behind. That is a shame. I have no sense of what items are the most valuable. I'm just gonna leave it like it is. Yeah, I was really hoping for a merchant we'd be able to unload some of this garbage onto. So this should be a very safe run. We had enough power here by the end to uh, maybe even not get hit at all? Yeah, these things are faster than Esseb is, but not by very much. Alright, couldn't have been simpler. Boy, I sure do wish that we had found some, uh, <laughs> some kind of merchant at any point during that floor, though. Maybe we'll be a little luckier here. So 
So I think I do want to focus on food over science right at the beginning, although... Getting a hold of upgraded resource production modules is important. Yeah, let's do this for a little while. I'm gonna push one more door in this direction and then we'll turn around and see what's on the other side. I'm hoping to locate a dead end early. Place that will make our decisions very easy for us. Well, it looks like maybe no such luck. Yeah. Tons of branching paths on this one. May as well hit this every time we encounter stuff, right? It has such a short cooldown. Alright, well, let's put something up here as soon as we can, but I'm going to explore in the direction of Kraeyang first so that we can use him as defense, and then we'll uh, move him later if it makes sense to move him. Yeah, I'm already uncomfortable with the amount of forking we're seeing here. 30 is the next one? Alright. Medic's damage output is okay, like, he can come with us, he just needs to not be the only person in the room. Hey, where were you last floor, buddy? Alright, so he's a food merchant, this is the type I am least eager to sell my stuff to. Well, it looks like I definitely made a good choice keeping both of the machine guns. Yeah, alright, we'll use them if we have to, I'm really hoping to find a, like, a science or industry merchant. Although, you know what, maybe we're fine on science. Maybe we're fine on science to the point that Krayang should move up to this room, actually. Okay, here's our dead end. A double speed thing, that's actually super handy. Yeah, that'll make it a lot easier for these two to come and join combat. Actually, I guess I want it to be Mormish who's nearby, right? Because we want to be able to use his, uh, his war profiteering. On something really cool. Happy pills. Well, alright. It's plus wit. Okay, so I was gonna level... I really wish I knew more about what, what skills people had. This would be a lot easier choice if I was a little bit more informed. Let's give Krayang a couple more. I'm curious if he's gonna gain repair. What he got was... Endless Expert. Oh, wow, he is a science generator. That's super good. That's so good for us to have right now. That was that was a good use of food. Uh, these two are next, though. We'll go to Pilfer soon. Um, it's just it's a lot of food from 5 to 9, and I want to make sure the rest of our heroes are leveled up enough to be capable of fighting. I'm going to miss this, uh, this Stila when its effect ends. <laughs> Oh, I'm so happy to see you. Alright, fall back, fall back. Right, turn on the things. Okay. Kill them all, kill them all quickly. Okay, we got some decent dust from that. And I'm not super happy with what we have here. So, plus food for every six... Oh, these these modules that give us resources for killing monsters are actually way better with this in this pod than they are in the others. Uh, that said, food is the one we don't really need. I almost wonder if it's worth it to just... Like, as expensive as these are, should I just... I'm going to reset. These are not what I want. The land module is... Big defense for other modules. That sucks. More effective Neurostun is good, though, and it's a nice cheap way of resetting. We'll find some better researches. Okay, another dead end. Oh, it's the elevator. That sucks. So the spawns are going to be much more difficult now. The good news is... Nothing. 
Good news is we have enough food that we can get some levels, I guess. Okay, he's got a passive coming up. Could be useful. Okay. Well, we've mapped this out. I'm gonna have... Wait a second, wait a second. Okay, I'm a little bit more confident now that we're not gonna get any other spawns. Would you please handle that? Okay. Oh, we totally got other spawns. Apparently there's still stuff coming. Oh, these things are slow. Alright, well. That was an okay amount of dust. I'm getting a little nervous about the branchiness of this floor, too. Well... We know where the elevator is, so we can leave, but also we know where the elevator is, so the monsters are guaranteed to be much more dangerous. Okay, we did, in fact, get spawns on top. Top of everything else. Like, things weren't bad enough. For real, I'm, like, I'm pretty worried about the way things are going. As of Tarash is starting to take, actually, a ton of damage. And like I said, there's gonna be, sorry, there's just gonna be a lot of pausing. That's that's just the way things are gonna be. Alright, Esim should probably head up here, Kray, and can fight that last, like, mouser by himself. And if we see any of those big snake guys, we gotta be careful. Yeah, those guys. Look at how hard they bite. Okay, not bad. Got the dust for another room. Upgrade our suppressive fire bot. We got the land module again, which is a shame. Yeah, all right. Upgrading our suppressive fire bot is sort of cheap. Is a relatively cheap way to reset. The viral injector actually lets us do damage to monsters. It is a non-offensive class module that does damage. Does that mean I should take it? We don't really have a lot of options for increasing our damage output, although I guess the Suppressive Firebot is such an option. 22 damage per second over 8 seconds. That does not compare particularly well to our hero damage output. And I think, honestly, the Suppressive Firebot is probably a better option for rooms in which we need to deal more damage. Given how good our heroes are, percentage boosts to their output is the, are, are significant. I'm definitely going to hit that in a second here. I probably should have been building more major modules. Like I built a number that felt... Yeah, I, I only built two, didn't I? Shoot. I'm getting all focused on the heroes here, man. Okay, awesome. So we can do this. You can go here. He really does not move that fast when he doesn't have any way to push the chair. So is it worth doing it now? They're still pretty cheap. How many doors do I think we have left? The the thing, the reason I didn't build anymore is that our our output felt so good that I thought I thought we must have already built more. How many doors do I think are left on this floor? I think there are enough doors left on this floor to justify one more build. I think. Alright, so let's see. Okay, no, we're good. Uh, what is the next set of researches we have available? Bad. I mean, honestly, technical HUD's not that bad. It's expensive for what it does. Still don't think the viral injector's very good. We're probably The problem is we'll just never build them. Mechanical PAL I don't like very much. Yeah, okay. There are definitely situations where a tactical HUD is going to be worth building. Move around here. I'm a little concerned, though. Okay, so we can light your room and send you down. Now, we are in a position where we could just, if things get hairy, we could just grab the crystal and take off. If we must. Okay. 
Never mind, that's the last new room. Uh, he's actually in some pretty significant danger here. I'm going to back up. See if we get spawns. Alright, we did get spawns. But now that the spawns have happened, it's safe for us to pull the heroes who are blocking spawns. I'm going to pull everybody back to here. We can't fight stuff in the crystal room, because like this enemy does AoE damage. If these guys get past us, it'll be bad. Man, I wish we still had uh wish we still had that double speed thing. Alright, we might have to spend some food on healing here. As much as I don't want to. We just need to keep him alive until the medic shows up, and when the medic can uh, can turn paramedic on, things are going to get a lot better. I'm actually not going to uh, activate War Profiteer. Not because of the cooldown, because obviously it would be up again on the next floor, but I actually don't want to lower his damage output right now, and I don't. we don't really need any more dust. I'm just trying to make sure that our... Okay, yeah, we're fine. We're fine. Everything's fine. Okay, now we got to go help Krayang been having a bit of a time. I kind of forgot I could do this. I say I don't think this was relevant. All right. We need to go and open this door. Uh, are both of the crystals currently running? No. We should we should see if there's something we want to start on this crystal before we open the door cuz opening the final door will immediately complete any running researches. Uh, I don't eh, you know what? Dust field generator is not bad. We Definitely will never have the industry to make use of emergency generator. But these these modules that buff your heroes are way better. They're probably not bad in the first place, but they're way, way better on this difficulty. Yeah, okay, pick that up for me. And we'll go open this door, get that both of these researches completed. And honestly, I'm feeling a lot more confident about where we are at this point. Oh, he's an operator too. I should, yeah, right. I knew that. I knew he was going to be. I'm not sure how much we'll want to have two people operating. Just in the sense that it's dangerous um, to have that few blockers. So let's see. More mon or more mesh is going to go here. We can actually light the whole floor. I don't, we don't really need to. You two stand up here. Asab's going to grab the thing. Oh, no, wait. Before Asab grabs the thing, we have too many items. As much as I don't need to sell stuff to the food merchant for food, like, we have food under control, we also don't want to just leave stuff behind, because that's wasteful. Oh, I thought we had extra items. I thought I had a fifth thing. Okay, never mind. We're not selling anything to you. Alright, it's going, you know, it's going okay so far. Let's, uh, probably do one more floor here before we end things for the day. So we're researching a lot of modules that I don't normally like. We're going to have to start making use of them, too. The monsters are getting uh, dangerous enough that I'm having to spend resources fighting them. And that is not something I want to be doing. I want to be spending those resources on level ups. Oh my god, Essen, can you not float any faster? How does the crystal slow down your movement if you're just floating anyway? I'm not really sure I understand the physics of that. I gotta say, though, this uh, this is an okay crew. It's a weird crew, but it's okay. Sorry, was the dust... Does the dust ghost need the bathroom? Maybe some of the nanites are, you know, expended, and he needs to shed them, but, like, in a polite way. Alright, only two doors out of the elevator. That's what I'd like to see. Okay, we're probably plus science first on this floor as well. And Mormish actually has more wit. Even though his wit's not being buffed. Do I want to pass him the happy pills then? Yeah, probably. Well, that's ugly. Ah, but if we, if we don't fight stuff in Mormish's room, we can't get the benefit of War Profit here. Maybe that's a good reason to have Kraying uh, continue operating. 
Although we're going to have two major modules up. They're both going to be out of uh, out of commission. Well, I guess let, let's pull this stuff back. Okay, War Profiteer and this up. Really do everything in our power to get some dust at the beginning of the floor. Uh, we actually can't build anything in the next door. I'm going to go this way. We have the dust to light one more easy room over here. Okay. No defense, but health regen in room without monsters. So we'll have to run away from the monsters to heal ourselves. And both of these... Both of these rooms fan out in three different directions. This is crummy. This is a bad start. So I think, actually, we want to move Mormish to here. Right? Because we, if we're going to fight stuff at the bottleneck, we want to fight it around Mormish more than we want to fight it around Krayang. Yep, and again, makes the most sense to fall back. Yeah, we're able to get quite a lot of dust. So I think we, we probably want to go ahead and get whatever his his other active is, and then we'll uh, we'll start channeling food into the medic for a while. Yes, right, so we didn't both need to come forward here. Yeah, that was a mistake. <laughs> Leaving that room empty for any period of time was a bad idea. Although I guess you know these spawns aren't that dangerous. Although we don't have anybody who can repair. So any damage our modules sustain is, at this point, permanent. How was this? Attack power 40 for all heroes in floor if this hero is in a room without monsters. That's interesting. So, like, there's a little bit of tension between these abilities, obviously. Hmm. Not really sure what the best way to play around that, uh, that pair of capabilities is. Alright, we do not run the medic forward. He is fine where he is. Crap. Well, who's ready for the floor to be really unreasonably difficult? Man, I can't wait until this thing's gone. Okay, we should definitely take a food replicator upgrade. Oh, man. Upgrading the Neurostun module twice in a single, twice for one cost does seem good, but we have to get more food and science. Have to. Alright, after this we can build another major module for this next door. Should I, I should probably depower that and power that. Although we're going to need this room, I don't know, whatever. We'll do it this way for right now. Okay. See if we can get him to block spawns in this room fast enough. There's absolutely no reason for you to be over here. Turn this on, and also this. Okay. It adds up to a lot of extra dust over time. So I think we're pretty good on science. Let's... Go for food again. And we need to be leveling him up. I think he might get placebo eventually, and placebo is very, very powerful. Just like in real life. Ask your doctor about placebo. Okay, he's got another active skill coming up too, which is probably good. Let's power this room, move you to here... This thing is still researching for, I think, one more door. Ah, uh, that was a weird zoom. What's up, guy? He's a dust merchant. Okay, that's compelling. 
He has a band leader's baton. We don't have any... Oh, no, we do have a spear user. And this is a really significant um, upgrade for him. Okay. He's got this sword, which is bad. And some armor, which I wouldn't mind. Some skills, or some uh, some accessories, which we can certainly use. Obviously, we do not buy anything from the dust merchant right now. But when we're consider when we're ready to leave the floor, we'll do a little bit of shopping here. This is a small enough number of enemies that I'm I'm fine just killing them here. Boy, I thought so. You know what? We're gonna spend a little bit of food here to make sure nothing dumb happens. Jeez. All right, I gotta I gotta take that stuff more seriously. That was our wake-up call there. Oh, I'm a little worried that the merchant's gonna get killed, honestly. Wait, no, you stay right there. You start heading home. Alright, I'm confident if that if, if there were gonna be spawns, they would have appeared by now, so he is no longer blocking anything. We're gonna wait we're gonna wait until these things get a little closer. Okay, now go. Come on, lots of dust. Well, I don't think I would qualify it as lots, but it was certainly some dust. Should we just leave? That feels really bad. Like, we are we have good resource income right now. We should try to figure out a way to stick this out. Uh, an upgrade for Tactical HUD that's 3% extra. Oh, Pepper Spray. We should probably get Pepper Spray, right? I think so. That's a way of dealing significant damage to monsters in the room that also has some uh, benefit in, to survivability for our heroes. I'm really worried about how this is going to go down here. You know what? The way we're set up right now, we could we're, we're in a position again where we could just take the crystal and dash if we have to. If it looks like we're going to get overwhelmed. Uh, don't like this much. And he's just gonna run. He's gonna run straight to the crystal. So the medic needs to run back here. Do I need to disengage one of my operators? Probably, huh? You know what? It's not a big deal to do it to Craig. Okay, we hit this. It'll buy us some time to move to the places we need to move to. Then Craig's gonna come down here. We don't need the science nearly as much as we need more security. Um, hopefully these monsters will reach Mormish slowly enough that we'll be able to get over there and deal with that. The medic is getting here too slowly. He should aim for the elevator now. Kill that guy. And then everybody into Mormish's room. Play defense over here. I'm just going to turn this on. This is kind of a lot of monsters. I'm a little worried about our health. Yeah, I think that was a good idea, because even through all the regen, SM took a, took a bit of a beating there. Okay, floor's getting pretty difficult. And the, <laughs> the thing I was operating broke. Okay, well, should we just leave? We do have something researching, and I'd love for it to finish. We need two doors, though, right? Yeah. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to put everybody over here. We're going to make there be no spawns in this area. Asib's going to open up a door. And if it looks like there's a number of monsters behind the door that we can't handle, I'll open one more door. I'll run over here, open this door so the research finishes, and we'll grab the crystal and leave. But maybe we'll just get no spawns? Nope. Um... That's not an unhandleable handleable number of monsters. I'm trying to wait make sure we have enough time for things to have not spawned. And then everybody needs to get over here. Okay. The most dangerous part's over. But it would be bad for Esib to die. And also he can't run to safety through the crystal room. So we're, we're just going to have to heal him a little bit.
He's almost here. I'm gonna have to heal him again. That thing. Okay. Not ideal. I think there's a pretty good chance that this is the last uh, time we should open a door on this floor. Like, I know there's still stuff left to get, but... Sure is dangerous. Okay, we can light that immediately. To prevent it from being spawnable. Okay, we didn't actually get a spawn. We can we can push on here. Uh, which one's Team Spirit again? Plus defense and attack if you're not alone in a room. Well, he will very rarely be fighting alone, so I think that's actually very appropriate on him. So I'm going to go over and start another research, because I think there's a pretty good chance that this door we're looking at here is the last one. We might be able to sneak another research out this floor. I know this sort of ties us to the floor, but maybe that, will, maybe that won't be a big deal. All right. And I guess if I'm thinking that this might be the last door and we might be in a runaway situation, should I spend some dust? What do I really want to buy? I want to buy this band leader's baton. Okay, you. You're the spear guy. So that gives him Iron Fist, which makes every hero in the room get plus four attack power for each other hero in the room. Fighting on Krayang is now, like, pretty viable. Um, I probably want to depower that, power that. And I think what I'm going to do here is open this door, and if it's not the last door, I'm going to try to run in and open all the doors, and then have Asip grab the crystal and get out. We have... Oh, we... Yeah, okay. We will have this available. So I'll just hit this if there are monsters, so that they don't make it to the crystal before Asip does what he needs to do. And he has Scamper, so he won't be slowed. Yep, this is the plan. Seems maybe a little crazy, but... I want to get my research done, and I want to get all of the resources and get out. That was, in fact, the final floor. Or the final door. And did we get spawns? We did. Okay, well, I mean, it doesn't matter. We're just, we're just grabbing stuff and leaving, so let's do that. This. Alright, everybody out. Oh, the, the elevator room's not actually powered, so stuff spawned in it instantly. That's bad. Um, okay, everybody stay with Aseb. Sorry, Aseb, you need to have these orders. You need to turn on paramedic thing. Uh, none of our other stuff matters. Alright, I ordered everybody to move to that room. Now we gotta refresh. Okay, at this point I think it can just be everybody run for the door. Uh, yeah, I needed to repower the elevator before doing the thing I did here. That was a little dangerous and could have resulted in a real disaster. But we got out, we made it, everything's fine-ish. Everything's basically fine. Look, Esseb, you start talking about having to go to the bathroom, and you can make everybody have to go to the bathroom. What are you thinking, man? Ooh, okay. Harrowing. Harrowing already. That is going to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching. And of course, come back next time to see if I get everybody killed. I'm putting 50-50 on it. And we'll see you then.